Hi there, I'm Christian Thomas and I'm here to talk to you about the most important performance metric for your headphones. So if you're in the market for new headphones, you've probably done a bunch of research and read a lot of online headphone reviews. And you probably read a bunch of flowery descriptions of how the music sounds. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't mean a whole lot if you can't block out outside noise because we're victims of a phenomenon called auditory masking. Now, you've definitely heard this before. Uh, ever go on a bus or a subway and all of a sudden, once the vehicle starts moving, all that engine noise makes your music really quiet and sound like garbage. Well, that's what that is. Auditory masking is essentially when a loud sound blocks out or masks a less powerful sound, aka your music. Now, all of the quality in the world isn't going to stop that, so what do you do? You need to isolate yourself, or you need to cancel out the sound using destructive interference. Now, you can click the link in the description below if you want to read more about active noise cancellation, but today we're just going to be talking about isolation. So how do you know when you're about to buy a set of headphones that does a good job at isolating? Well, you can look at the specs page, but they will tell you that they block out something like 20 dB of noise or 15 dB of noise. But that doesn't tell you much because it implies that it works just as good across all frequencies when it very demonstrably doesn't. So you have to be able to either test it or find somebody can to test it for you. And I'm that somebody. Okay, in order to properly test this, we need something that can stand in for a human head and record the results. To do that, we're going to use a mannequin head to hold the microphone in place while also serving as something the headphones can seal to. After mounting the microphone, we're good to go. All right, I'm back from the workshop. So now what we're gonna do is test the headphones. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a really loud test tone called pink noise, which is about equal power for every frequency out there. It sounds horrible. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to record that with the headphones off of the head first to get a bass line. And then we'll record that again with the headphones on the head to measure the difference. Subtract one curve from the other, and that's our graph. So now that we have this chart, what does it mean? For this chart, our x-axis is frequency of sound, or how high the notes are, while the y-axis is how many decibels of sound were blocked from reaching the ear. Now, the term decibel can be confusing, but for the purposes of this chart, all you need to know is that every 10 decibel reduction means outside noise is reduced by half. When that green line hits 10 decibels, outside noise is half as loud at that frequency without any headphones on, 20 decibels a quarter as loud, and 30 decibels an eighth as loud, and so on. I've color-coded the lines to help us know the difference between good and bad attenuation. Here we see how well the Bowers and Wilkins P7 wireless block out noise. They're relatively good isolators, but notice they don't block out much noise under 300 Hz. Here's a tone to show what I mean. Any noise you encounter lower than that while wearing these headphones will reach your ear, even if you get a perfect fit. While that may look bad now, take a look at some open back headphones, which don't try to isolate at all. When wearing these, you'll hear all these notes from the outside world. You're going to want to leave these at home where it's presumably quiet. Active noise cancelers like the AKG NC60s will destroy a ton more sound and you'll appreciate having the low end taken care of. ANC units do a great job at reducing noise to a greater degree than passive isolators, as you can see the line turns blue in the high end, indicating a near 30 decibel attenuation. It's charts like this that tell us where these headphones are most appropriate for using. So for example, headphones that do really great in the mid-range are perfect for an airplane because the engine whine is somewhere in between 100 and 700 hertz. However, taking a look at open-backed headphones, we can see that, yeah, these would be really horrible for a subway because you're going to let everything in and it is going to destroy how good your music sounds. So here's the big question. Why do you care? Why does anybody care what your headphones isolate? Well, the thing is, is that it's extremely easy to damage your hearing and if you turn your volume up to drown out the rest of the world, 
you could end up with noise induced hearing loss extremely easily. The world become quieter. You can't hear things that you used to be able to hear. And that damage is permanent. Yeah, that hearing's not coming back. <laughs> so the lower you can listen to your music, the better your hearing will be long term. So that's it for our discussion on isolation. Thanks for watching. If you want to know more about the gory details of your hearing or which headphones you should buy, make sure to check out soundguys.com for guides and reviews. If you haven't already, be sure to mash that subscribe button and sign up for our newsletter so you can stay up to date on the latest news, reviews, and features. Links are below. I'm Christian Thomas, and happy listening!